Let us pray. Dear God, we ask that as today's graduates depart from here, they might become blessings to the world. That remembering the gifts that their families and friends and teachers have been for them, they might become gifts for others and so become blessings. That noticing how the world is always prepared for them by those who have gone before them, they might make the world a better place for those who come after them and so become blessings. That glimpsing purposes far greater than they, they might imagine for their lives, they might also strive beyond their own imaginings and so become blessings. May they become blessings to the world. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. This graduation ceremony is the 105th in West Rivers history, and on behalf of the faculty and staff at the school, I would like to welcome all of you to this very special day. To the parents, families, and friends of our graduates, I know you are suspended right now between pride and disbelief. It seems impossible that the child your mind sees is really the accomplished young woman who sits before you. This is indeed the case. This is her day. Our task is to celebrate her triumphs. To join me in my welcome, I would like to introduce Sarah Wardell, Vice President of Westover's Board of Trustees. Thank you and good morning on this beautiful day. Welcome to Westover's 105th graduation. I am Sarah Wardell. I am a Vice President of the Board of Trustees. I'm the class of 60 and an over. I'm here really on behalf of all of the, the trustees and particularly on behalf of Francine Young, the president of the board um, who is stuck in Texas. All of us here, parents, siblings, friends, supporters, all the people here are here to congratulate and honor you, the graduating seniors. This is your day. You all deserve to be recognized today and I'm delighted to turn the lectern back to Ann Polina to do just that. Thank you. The first part of our graduation program is the awarding of prizes. On behalf of the faculty and with the assistance of Vice President Wardell um, and uh, Ben Hildebrand, I'm pleased to make these presentations. The Elizabeth Hosmer Kellogg Prize for Excellence in English to Gabrielle Di Bartolomeo. The Elizabeth Wade White Prize for Excellence in English to Isabella Yu. The Julius B. Smith Prize for Excellence in Mathematics to Charlotte Iwasaki. <laughs> the Julie P. McClintock Prize for Excellence in French to Hannah Hudson. The Linda Summers Smith Prize for Excellence in Spanish to Anna Shauno. <laughs> the Elizabeth Ross Cushman Prize in Classical Language for Excellence in Latin to Dana Smook.
the Chinese Book Prize for Excellence in Chinese to Amy Tiang. The William Warren Barber and Elizabeth Barber Higgins 40 Prize for Excellence in History awarded to two students, Laura Nicole Lorenzo and Emma Bolia. <laughs> the Frederick J. Kingsbury Prize for Excellence in United States History to Margaret Milford. The Jane Wells Cheever Prize for Excellence in Science to Lexi Fielding. The Francis Sortwell Perry Prize in the History of Fine Arts for Excellence in Art History to grace you. The Gail Whitney Stir Prize for Excellence in Studio Art to Amy Tiang. <laughs> the Music Prize for Excellence in Music and Outstanding Contribution to Music at Westover to Sophia Landman. Our last five prizes recognize some of the personal qualities we believe essential. The Ellen Kane McGinnis Prize is presented to a member of the junior class who, in the judgment of the faculty, shows great promise of developing certain qualities possessed by Ellen Kane McGinnis, independence of spirit, sense of humor, courage, and love of life for herself and others. This year's winner is Addie Pates. The Louise Buckley Dillingham Award goes to a student who has exemplified integrity to Maddie Gelfand. <laughs> the Westover Parents Association Prize goes to a senior for valuable contribution to school life this year's award winner is Stephanie Crudelli. <laughs> the Mr. and Mrs. Harry Webster Walker the Second Community Service Award goes to that member of the senior class who has performed outstanding service to the wider community during her years at Westover. This year the award goes to Mairead Fay.
Our final prize is the Mary Robbins Hillard Prize to a senior who through leadership has shown qualities of initiative, perseverance, and courage to Hannah Hudson. Each year, our um, senior class chooses one member to speak for the class. Um, this year's student speaker is Stephanie Crudelli. Stephanie is a four-year senior from Middlebury, Connecticut. She is an honors student with a transcript that boasts courses in a wide range of disciplines, many of those at the advanced placement and honors level. Throughout her time at Westover, Stephanie has been an innovator and a leader. She was in the first graduating class in our Invest in Girls program, a co-curricular program in business and investing. In her junior year, she was second head of West's, one of our key leadership positions. She has been an active head in our women's rights organization, a teacher's assistant for photography in our summer program, and a member of our JV tennis team. But it is perhaps in music and theater that uh, Stephanie has left her greatest mark on Westover. First head of Glee Club, head of our a cappella group Chanterelle, lead and supporting actress in many of our productions, Stephanie has made us laugh and cry and cheer for her performances. Last year she was awarded the Emily Christopher Award for Photography and the Ellen Kane McGinnis Award. Um, and, if, and I would remind you that the qualities awarded um, with Ellen Kane McGinnis are independence of spirit, sense of humor, courage, and love of life for herself and others. Those qualities are Stephanie in a nutshell. We're so pleased to have her as our student speaker. and I'm the senior head of Chanterelle. <laughs> One last time for you guys, enjoy it. Thank you, Mrs. Polina, for that humbling introduction. For those of you curious, an intro that good is only gonna run you about 20 bucks. You'll find your payment in your mailbox, as we discussed earlier. <laughs> good morning, and welcome to everyone here today. Parents, family, friends, esteemed faculty, Mr. Hungerford, <laughs> underclassmen, and of course, the Westover School class of 2014. I'd be remiss if I didn't start off with a few notes of thanks. Thank you first and foremost to my parents, for one, literally being the reason I am here today, and two, for the support, love, and everything in between you've given me these past 17 years. You have three seconds to stop crying. <laughs> Thank you to Kristen White, without whom you might have been stuck here listening to me drone on with my first terrible draft that was based on a tweet. <laughs> and most importantly, thank you to my classmates, the people who shaped my heart at the place that shaped my mind, for giving me this opportunity and the honor of summing up our four years here in just a few minutes. I really love risk. No, not the board game that's played in the basements of 13-year-old boys across the country, but actual, honest risk. I love risk so much that as a future finance major, I even wrote my comment app essay on the educated gamble of investing. Crokey is probably behind me, wondering, what are you talking about? You wrote about summer camp and growing up. Well, surprise, I actually turned an unedited, unproofread, unapproved essay about risk into a risk when on a whim I sent that to my only college the night before everything was due instead of the one I'd been working on and editing for months. <laughs> See? Risk. I really do love it. Now why would that simple concept inspire my career path, my only college essay, and then even my graduation speech? It's simple. You tend to learn the most about yourself when put in a situation that might require you to make a decision and maybe take a chance. Do you go the safe route, the one where you know you'll end up quietly content after an easy journey? Or do you go for the unknown, the one where you don't know the roads, have only a vague idea of a destination, and you still haven't downloaded the Google Maps app after updating to iOS 7? 
We all took a huge risk when deciding to come to Westover. It was a brand new environment that for most, if not all of us, was something different than anything we had ever been exposed to. We risked leaving behind friends and family at home. We risked our chance at what our society considers the traditional high school experience. We risked the very high possibility that none of us would ever see a boy again until we went off to college. <laughs> but we all took the risk and we all took it together. I'm sure no one realized it during sports camp move in, but pretty soon we'd find that we'd made sisters, not friends and weren't as alone on this journey than we may have originally thought we were. One of the most important ingredients in determining risk is analyzing statistics and figures. Let's run through some of those from our time here at Westover. 23, the average monthly amount of community service emails we received. 100%, the chance that someone will have you laughing at breakfast before you've even had your morning coffee. Seven, the number of times that our male faculty have dressed in drag to either teach us a lesson or to just put smiles on our faces. 55%, the chance that Paige Cunningham was going to show up to assembly on time in the morning. <laughs> One, the number of ferns gone missing. Hashtag find fern 2014. And zero the number of graduation speech appropriate statistic ideas my class gave me when I asked for them during senior chapel. <laughs> Zero guys, not one. <laughs> Your own personal stats are what I hope everyone will remember to draw upon when forced to make an educated guess. These statistics are meant for us to acknowledge but not to dwell on the past. Going on a journey is pretty impossible if you don't have a starting point. So evaluating your current state of being and how you got there are also vital factors in evaluating risk. The funny thing about risk, however, is that even though you don't know where you're going, you will find people along the way to help guide you. Here at Westover, I found throngs of people with road signs, flashlights, and travel tips. Without the amazing faculty seated behind me, I wouldn't have the knowledge necessary for navigation. We have all learned so much more from these amazing people than just words from a textbook. They were always there to offer moral as well as academic support. They managed to intertwine vital information about verb conjugations and unit circles with basic lessons on how to be caring and contributing members to society. Also, and I think I speak for the entirety of my class when I say this, I really would not have gotten through four years here without my classmates. I'll be honest, I want to get up here and say that every moment has been sunshine and rainbows and banana chocolate chip muffins, but the sad reality is that the school could burn to the ground in under seven minutes. And there were days where we all desperately wanted to use that to our advantage. <laughs> but throughout the dorms and in the classrooms, there were smiling faces ready to extinguish the flames. Freshman year, we bonded over assimilating to our new home. Nearly everyone, even the day students, although maybe just me, experienced a few little bouts of homesickness and maybe struggled to see how our futures here were going to pan out. Sophomore year, well, sophomore year was really boring. It may have been because we were caught in between not quite being completely ingrained at Westover, but nothing was still new. We still helped each other combat our boredom by making a Facebook for George Willard, our favorite Winesburg character, and holding a giant Red Hall camp out during the power outage. Junior year, I think we all tried to go as lone wolves. We looked at colleges, readying ourselves to take risks with the application process, and bringing up a strong, too competitive air amongst each other. However, we eventually learned that we are 1,000 times stronger united than we are apart. We really took that to heart senior year, where before my eyes, I saw our class meld in a way we just hadn't the past three years. As college decisions began to roll in, senior privileges started to become actually worth their while, and we realized that many of our traditions here would be the last. We really appreciated everything Westover has had to offer. Most importantly, I watched as every single one of you took countless risks. Every time you press submit on the Common App, risk. 
Every time you decided to run for an office, risk. Every time you decided which basketball team to put where in the March Madness bracket, <laughs> risk. Hungerford. <laughs> <laughs> I really couldn't be prouder of all of you for being so brave, and I hope you have all found that same pride in yourselves. While the ultimate goal of this speech is to endorse risk, I do feel the need to put down a disclaimer. If you pick the exciting mystery option in life, and you're traveling along and something doesn't seem right, you can turn around. For example, now this is a completely hypothetical situation, if you were to decide to go get a spray tan before prom, <laughs> and you get to the place and the woman who's about to spray you is bright orange, you can stop. If you then see that she has only one shade offered, and it's the darkest one, you can stop. If she accidentally sprays tanning base in your open eye and you think this is an omen, you can stop. <laughs> but if you do not heed any of these warnings and things do go awry, I have full faith that all of you are equipped with the skills to either change your fate or make the best out of what you have. I can also promise that you have people right back here to help you with whatever you need to make it better. And of course, in my case, to remind you that you look like you belong at Willy Wonka's factory. <laughs> I had wanted to close my speech with the following advice. Taking a risk is like jumping off a cliff that overhangs just enough that you can't see what's at the bottom. There could be clear, calm blue water or sharp and jagged rocks, but having the courage to jump is what life is all about. I've given this speech many a time to my friends. But it wasn't really until someone gave this speech back to me that I realized, wow, this is crap. Complete crap. <laughs> Special thank you to Courtney Bliss for showing me that I was going against everything I should believe in as both a Westover girl and a future member of the finance world. I've been encouraging her and others to make uneducated guesses. So instead, I want to say, in the end, it really doesn't matter what you do, as long as you've used the skills Westover has instilled in us to make the choice you deem is right. You're probably thinking, let's back the crazy train up here. Aren't I supposed to be taking the riskier option? Did you just make me sit through this whole speech just to take it all back in the last paragraph? Well, yes and no. Risks are indeed what I am encouraging you to take but I urge you to really evaluate what you're putting at stake when making one. Never forget that we've been provided with the skills to make academic, social, and personal educated guesses, not ridiculous risks. Seniors, imagine yourself in one of those boring gen ed classes we'll all be stuck in at some point next year. Your professor asks a question and you have a vague sense of what the answer is, but you're not sure. Young ladies such as yourselves are going to raise your hands, put yourselves out there, and make an educated guess about your education. You know that the rock below the cliff is merely just being wrong. So, you jump. On your way out from class, you make eye contact with the cute guy you've been watching since moving and wonder whether or not to strike up a conversation. Crystal clear water is you get married and have 2.4 kids and a picket fence. The rock is that he's just not that into you. So, you jump. You meet with your academic advisor who asks you what you want to do with the rest of your life. You have about 20 cliffs spread before you, and it's daunting. But trust me, when the time comes, you're going to know what to do. While the educated risk might not always be comfortable, you have the power to make it okay. You have the self-awareness and the confidence to guide your own life. Everything that Westover has taught us allows us to make the choices that are designed to most enrich our lives. Never forget, though, that regardless of whatever decisions you choose to make, that beyond clear water, jagged rocks, and everything in between, there's a little nunnery filled with laughter and support and sisters with hearts not of gold but of tried and true Westover yellow. Thank you.
Well, thank you, Stephanie. That's excellent. It's now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Sonia Kim. Sonia was a member of the class of 1994 at Westover, and she is CEO and president of Carl Fisher Music and Theodore Presser Company. Sonia arrived in the United States at, States at age 16 to further her studies in piano at the Juilliard School while she completed her academic work at Westover. She earned her Bachelor of Arts in Economics and Music through the Columbia Barnard Juilliard Joint Program. She spent three years in New York working with human capital strategy practice at Mercer Consulting before moving to California for a brief foray into the world of software development. She returned to the East Coast one year later to pursue an MBA at Harvard Business School. In 2004, Sonia joined Carl Fisher Music as Director of Corporate Development and soon expanded her role to also work with the Theodore Presser Company. She has played an integral role in restructuring and combining the operations of Theodore Presser Company and Carl Fisher Music. She has also led both companies into the digital world, streamlining the data management, making digital scores available online and developing new websites. In 2006, she became the CEO and president of the, the companies, and in 2009, um, uh, excuse me, at the Theodore Presser Company, and in 2009 of both companies. As a pianist, Sonia has performed at the Salzburg Music Festival, the Nysel Hall Chamber Music Festival, and the Bowdoin Music Festival. She currently serves on the Board of Music Publishers Association. She has been active at Westover on the Board of Governors and is remembered as much for her generosity of spirit and warmth as for her formidable academic and professional accomplishments. I'm honored to introduce her as this year's graduation speaker. Sonia. And a big thank you to the class of 2014 and Mrs. Polina for inviting me today. Westover's graduation ceremony is one of the most beautiful and memorable events in my life. And to relive the experience and be part of the celebration as your commencement speaker is an honor and a pleasure. So thanks again. Stephanie, if I knew I would follow that act, I would have taken some stand-up comedy lessons. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> Before I begin, I have a little confession and a special thanks to make. I fear there would be an emergence this morning. Maybe I'll forget to bring my speech. Maybe I'll lose my voice. Maybe the traffic from New York City will be bad and I'll miss the whole thing. So we got here last night just to make sure there would be no emergencies. And as I'm getting ready with my family this morning, we realize what that emergency was. I forgot to pack a pair of pants for my 20 months old baby. <laughs> if it weren't for Ben uh, Hildebrand, there would have been a naked boy running around. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> As I started thinking about what to say today, I tried to recollect my own graduation speeches at Westover in college and graduate school. And I could remember only one thing about all three of them, that they were long, very long. So lesson number one, keep it short. Then a terrifying thought occurred to me. How am I going to do this without any grammatical or dictionaries? <laughs> and my mind started to race. Where's my Werner's book? Did I throw that out? I knew I shouldn't have thrown it out. Thankfully, nobody will see the speech on paper. So I knew I didn't have to worry about commas or semicolons. So as long as I watch out for dangling modifiers and use proper pronouns and prepositions, I'm hoping Mr. Coffin and Mr. Hungerford may sit through the whole speech. <laughs> Let me begin with a question to the seniors. How many of you are absolutely sure about your college major? Can you raise your hand? 
Okay. How many of you are pretty sure? Okay. How many of you have absolutely no idea? <laughs> Excellent. Good for you. I ask because today I want to talk to you about uncertainty. More specifically, I think that was my 20 month old. <laughs> More specifically about the tendency and desire to define our future now because of our aversion to uncertainty. I came to Westover to study music. I went to New York City every Saturday to attend the Juilliard School, which, by the way, meant I missed every dance at Avon and Salisbury, <laughs> which I'm still grumpy about. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a pianist. And my life's focus had been the piano, with four to five hours of practice every day for 10 years. During my time at Westover, however, I came to realize there were many other interesting subjects. Thanks to Mrs. Polina, math was really fun. After all, if someone kindly explains algebra or even calculus using the word blob, of course it's fun. Thanks to Ms. Burbank, I could imagine myself becoming a chemist. I also wanted to become fluent in Spanish and French, and I started to appreciate English literature, which I thought was not possible for someone who did not speak English well. So I decided to attend university instead of enrolling at a conservatory where I would have studied music exclusively. I still very much wanted to be a pianist, but not if it meant giving up everything else in life. And that's when the trouble began. For the first time, I had to ask the question, what do I want to be when I grow up? I felt compelled to commit myself immediately to a career path with equal conviction. I knew I could not be a doctor because I vomited after dissecting a frog in biology class. <laughs> Business, I thought, was for greedy people who cared mostly about money. So the choice was obvious. I was going to be a lawyer. <laughs> After all, the law was an esteemed and admirable profession, and the path was equally clear. Get on the pre-law track at college. I heard somewhere that political science is the best major for pre-law. Political science, that sounded impressive to me. Never mind that I didn't speak English until I came to Westover which makes me a very slow reader, and that writing a paper is like pulling teeth for me. Never mind that I also had no interest whatsoever in the subject matter. <laughs> what I wanted was a sense of secure and defined future. So I declared to my friends, my parents, my teachers, Westover governors, Anybody who would ask. I'm going to major in political science and I'll be going to law school. I was also going to get married at 24, have exactly four kids, not 2.4, but four, precisely in the order of girl, boy, boy, girl. But that's a whole other story. Once I got to college, I started taking the required courses for political science major. I found these classes to be boring and uninspiring, and I just could not get into the subject matter. I tried my best, but slowly I started skipping classes in exchange for sitting in my room and reading Jane Austen, Edith Wharton, Ian Forster, 
Henry James, anything but my poli-sci readings. Eventually, though, neither I nor my GPA could take another poli-sci class. What made it particularly difficult was that nobody seemed to notice I was sinking. At Westover, the whole school knows if you miss a class without proper permission. Because you'd be seen the next morning scrubbing the Red Hall furniture. In college, I may be taking a lecture with a Nobel laureate professor, but he didn't care whether I showed up or whether I handed up my paper. That was very unmotivating for me. My French teacher at Westover, Ms. Rothman, had the unfortunate job of teaching us at 7.55 a.m. when most of us were half asleep, or in my case, often still asleep. One of those mornings, there was a pop quiz, and I was missing it. She gave out the quiz to class and marched straight to my room upstairs. The door flung open, and I don't remember what she said in French. But to this day, when I hear the phrase, allez-y, I don't hear, let's go. I hear, get out of bed, go take your pop quiz in your pajamas. <laughs> I continued to struggle, but still ended up declaring political science as my major. Then, during the second semester of my sophomore year, I took an introduction to economics, only because it was supposed to be a good complement to political science major. And in that class, something extraordinary happened. Everything made sense. And learning, once again, became exciting. Of course, if you have 20 pieces of pizza and no soda, you're willing to give up 15 pieces just to get a sip of soda. My professor's example was pizza and beer, but I figured I would keep it clean. <laughs> of course, Lady Gaga tickets can be sold at a ridiculous price because there is only one Lady Gaga and plenty of eyes and ears addicted to her. Put simply, the concepts of scarcity, supply and demand, pricing, were fully comprehensible from my own experiences, such as the Dorcas Fair. Not only did the subject matter excite me, but also I found a teacher who taught in a fashion that reminded me of what I experienced at Westover and what I had come to expect of a teacher. That is someone who is as inspired by his students as he is by the subject. I went to the economics department chair to ask for approval for me to change my major to economics. But he would not approve because I had taken only one course while my cohorts had fulfilled many of the cor requirement courses. He was concerned that I would not be able to catch up and graduate on time. I begged. You don't understand, I was born to be an economist. <laughs> After several meetings, he signed the paperwork under the condition that I take at least three economics courses over the summer. I did, and the rest of my college career looked nothing like the first two years. I went to every single class. I was an active participant in classroom. I managed to fulfill all my requirements. I dramatically improved my GPA. I graduated a semester early with department honor given to the top economics student. Looking back, if I had said from the beginning, I have no idea what I want to be, so let me explore what's out there and see what inspires and interests me. Chances are I would have stumbled upon economics earlier. 
At the time, though, not knowing what my future would hold seemed too scary. It felt better to say I'm going to be something I have no idea about than to say I have no idea what I'm going to be. It also felt as I would be disappointing those around me if I seemed lost. I wish I knew then that my family and friends and my teachers from Westover would still be as proud of me regardless of my struggles. And this was just one example of many more moments like this. Once you know what to study, it's time to figure out what your career will be. Then you have to decide who you will marry, when and if to have kids, what kind of parent you want to be, whether to be a stay-at-home mom or a working mom. The list goes on. All of these important decisions have one thing in common, uncertainty. They always seem daunting because you're not sure what it's all about. But as a business writer, Tony Schwartz put it so well, let go of certainty. The opposite is an uncertainty. It's openness, curiosity, and a willingness to embrace paradox. The ultimate challenge is to accept ourselves exactly as we are, but never stop trying to learn and grow. And that would be my three and a half year old. <laughs> Whether you realize it or not, Westover has already given you much more than a strong foundation for academics. Soon, you will be surrounding the senior tree and probably crying because you're parting with your best friend. I did 20 years ago. And after what I experienced two weeks ago at my reunion, I can tell you with confidence, you have made 53 lifelong friends that have already accepted you fully exactly as you are. And that acceptance is unwavering, no matter how much time passes. And before I conclude, I would like to steal just 30 seconds to thank those who have made it possible for me to find my place in the world. And Mr. Coffin, Laura, Ms. Burbank, Mr. Hungerford, Ms. Rothman, Terry and Alice, Eileen and Rich, Ms. Smith, Penny, Mr. Havery, and my dear friends from class of 94. Knowing that I had unwavering support and love from you made it easier for me to tackle life challenges, big and small. Thank you, thank you and thank you. Now I would like to welcome the class of 2014 to the Alumni Association of Westover with two final pieces of advice. If my speech were only eight words long, it would be this. Be kind to others and never stop learning. Congratulations. Thank you, Sonia. That was absolutely wonderful. Now, with the assistance of Ms. Wardell and Mr. Hildebrand, and on behalf of the faculty and board of trustees, it is my pleasure to award Westover diplomas to the graduating class. Um, I'm going to ask the audience, please, to hold your applause until the last student in each row has received her diploma. Hannah Beatrice. Hudson.
Gabrielle Marie Di Bartolomeo. Carolyn Anderson Dahl. <laughs> Francis Stewart LeMay. Paige Elizabeth Cunningham. Lauren Nicole Danielowski. Nadezhda Gripkova. Stephanie Maria Crudelli. Sophia Barbara Landman. And Amy Ben Tiong. Maira Erica Malapad Trenchalange. Lauren Nicole Lorenzo. Karina Julianne Sorrels. Maraid Ann Deirdre Fay. Catherine Stewart Carroll. Ariana Janine Mignotes. Emma Bell McGovern. Emma Morrison Bullio. Courtney James Bliss. Victoria Ann Rousseau. <laughs> Evelyn Mary Summermatter. <laughs> Jocelyn Valerie McKenzie. <laughs> and Sujin Chi. Christina Herp Moray. Kira Ray Hunter. Anna Eliano Wilhelmine Shahuno. Catherine Margaret Krigowski. Chloe Hannah Janeski. Kazia Sajalea Roll. Rianne Elizabeth Lewis. <laughs> Emily Morgan Potts. <laughs> Haley Lauren Del Molino. <laughs> Olivia Weatherford Burns. Madeline Gabrielle Gelfand. Woo! 
Nam Yoon Lee. Dana Lynn Smook. Charlotte Marie Iwasaki. And Kachleen Ann O'Reilly. Chloe Handler Anello. Yunsa O. Oh. Kaylee Rose Talon. Elizabeth Catherine Reed. Paige Bianca Calabrese. Gretchen Carnes Kinkle. Ika Wong. Faranaz Afak. Akuya Bawa Obing. Margaret Catherine Milford. Brittany Elizabeth. Dumas. Claire Iyer Penawat. Alexandra Sky Fielding. <coughs> Lauren Elizabeth Benedetto. Myrna Hulwin Cox. And Marissa Page Littman. It is my great pleasure to present the graduating class of 2014. <laughs> Sorry, I'll do it again. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I can say after this is anticlimactic, but um, at this point in the program, I, I do have a few words I'd like to say to the senior class, but before I begin, I'll warn you that the closing ceremony after the benediction and the school anthem takes place on the athletic field directly behind me. I believe you will want to see this ceremony. It is our graduation circle, a tradition as old as the school. 
Throughout the years, photographs of the Westover graduation circle have appeared on everything from greeting cards to dust jackets to the pages of Life magazine. The images of unity and community of wholeness and belonging are uniquely Westover. The best vantage point for viewing the circle is gained by exiting from the quad to my left and then walking down the arcade towards the LBD. The ceremony can also be seen from the embankment directly behind me. May I ask that you take your belongings with you as chairs are going to be taken down rapidly while you're viewing the graduation circle. So a few words to the senior class. In his book, Beyond Words, Frederick Beekner wrote three simple sentences that may be the best advice I've ever heard for young people in times of important life transition. Here they are. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. Should probably just sit down now because I think that says it all. But I do want to comment very briefly on the last sentence. In your time at Westover, I know you have learned many lessons beyond the academic, lessons about integrity and resilience and sharing and friendship. I know you have grown into young women of goodness and character. I know the virtues you bring to the world are legion, but no virtue will be more vital to you than courage. It is courage that will enable you to stop listening to the many, many voices advising you to do what is easy and start listening to that initially small inside voice urging you to do what is right. It is courage that will let you step into the unknown with excitement, if some trepidation, and discover the beauty that abounds. It is courage that will impel you, in words we heard read in chapel earlier this year, not to claim that your hands are tied when your hands are folded. It is courage that will enable you to be what this world we present to you today needs so much, women who lead. Yes, that is you. I know that you think that courage will come into play only when the hard things in life face you, but I need you to remember that more often it will take all the courage you can muster to call out the beauty around you, the beauty in people that the world will not recognize because they are different, the beauty in situations that others will avoid because their very honesty makes them challenging, the beauty in this world which others will not see because their heads are down. So here is the world. Beautiful things will happen. Don't be afraid. May God bless you and your bright futures. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green, and azure blue come to awaken in you a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the kurok of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you, May there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak of love to mind your life. Amen.